Someone's munching on their candy before. Oh my god, you're recording. Press record. This is just rude. We talking and sucking and <laughs> on candy. <laughs> uh, strangers have the best candy. Too bad we're not strangers. It might taste better then. But. Butterscotch. Good stuff. Sugar free. Sugar free butterscotch. I just want to wake up every day, throw a leg over my scoot, and ride. American Roadrunner. American Roadrunner. Stories from the road, on road and off road. Whether you are a rider, wrencher, racer, or just a weekend warrior, this is the show for you. You found us, my fellows. And now, your host, Bob Marshall. American Roadrunner Motorcycle Show. Welcome back. This is part two, episode two of season two. This is Road Angel. We get back to talking with Angel after she hasn't ridden in months after her accident and she tells you all about what it's like to get back on a bike, a bike that she's never ridden before, a bike, Honda Rebel, much smaller than the large Harley she's used to hopping around on. We get her reactions, her feelings, and above all, her story. Enjoy, my fellows. And we are back. Well, I got to tell you, if I may speak from a dad point of view i was quite proud we went out riding for maybe half an hour 45 minutes did what 15 20 miles but the trick was she's on a new bike that you got to feel out and my honda rebel there's not much to it it's very stripped down it's very not for the average consumer and she had never gotten to feel the power of a Honda Rebel 250. <laughs> the great power. <laughs> the great power. What'd you think? How are you feeling? Oh, man. It was great. A yeah. lot of feel, old feelings came back. And, uh, mm. you know, mostly good feelings. Just remember how fun and freeing it feels. Um, and then, I mean, we went during sunset. So it was so beautiful. The skies, the palm trees, California palm trees. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It was real pretty. What was your favorite part? My favorite part was uh, <laughs> trying to stop right next to you, uh, yes. very last minute, and skidding, and then giving you the good nod, like <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> that looked real because you you were skidding for a good fifteen twenty feet, right? <laughs> yeah, we came upon a yellow light, and there's it's a left or right light. It's not a straight through. Right. So I was just I was gonna go for it. But then I saw your rear brake or your brake light turn on I'm like this fucker. <laughs> it's a big road. I didn't but think we fun. could make it. And then on the Rebel, it's only the rear brake. So yeah. I didn't have both front and rear brake to help me stop instantly. Well, I'll tell you, you know what it is on that <laughs> on that particular bike? It's got, yeah, it's got no front fender, no front brake, no controls. I think the bike has four wires. I rewired it myself. Yeah, pretty stripped down. A lot of fun. And I thank God it's like... Super light, uh, because the you know right when I sat on the bike and try to like get out of your gate, um, I already felt my knee was like really tight, and I'm just like, oh no! I was like, just, I don't know, just scared. Uh, how if my knee was gonna stay that like tight or stiff? Uh, um, can't imagine. Like I, I was thinking, I can't imagine how it's gonna be like when I'm leaning on the right yeah. to take it or yeah to take a right turn. Um, yeah. But I mean, I did it, and it just loosened up. So. It was overall it was pretty good. Just I think I just need to stretch a little bit in the beginning, um, and then just take it slow. Don't take do like sudden stops or uh, put my legs down too quick because my legs gonna give out for sure for yeah. how early I am in recovery. How's it feel now? Um, it's it's good still. When we we're walking up the stairs to get back inside the house, um, it was pretty hot, rough. Uh, what do you call it? Like on each step, I have to put place both of my feet down. I right. couldn't do like one foot after the other, the next step kind of thing. 
It's I just need to strengthen my right leg. You know, for being in bed rest for almost three months, my muscles aren't as strong as before. It actually almost looks physically smaller. Yeah. What's that, that word? My it. muscles... Um, I sound like a retard, but <laughs> my muscles got smaller for sure. Right. Well, there's a t- medical term for it. Okay. Um, uh, just from laying there. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, that was the weirdest feeling. I can feel it when I was in bed rest. I would just have cramps, like right. constant cramps on my thighs and my calves. And I'm not even like moving. It's like the same kind of cramps or like Charlie horses, I guess, that you get when you're overexerting yourself, but I'm doing nothing. And yeah, I could feel it. It's my muscles just like going away but yeah just trying to get stronger be and then be smart on a bike now that i'm on a bike like this is the first time i ever rode a bike i just gotta be extra safe and thoughtful careful aware just knowing you know my condition we rode a few miles around the corner to my buddy reed shop that's max speed cycles here in riverside and it's kind of all neighborhood over to there it's kind of behind an airport our riverside airport as well Unfortunately, Reed was not there. He must be out enjoying a Saturday night like a loser. And uh, so I took her up and around to our main drag called Magnolia Avenue here in town. And it's all stoplights and traffic and shopping center. And Oh, yeah. At the beginning, I, I felt like I was going so fast. <laughs> so, so freaking fast. But then I noticed I could never catch up to you. And I'm like, man, how fast is Bob going? Like... We're in a residential. He, why is he going 60? We were probably just going like 30 or 35. Right. The feeling was a bit off. <laughs> but until we got into that road where the speed limit was like 50, 55. Right. That's when I'm like, oh, okay. I wasn't going 55. <laughs> this is 55. But even on the Rebel, it was just screaming away on fifth gear. That's what I needed to do. Since it's the first time in, I rode in four months, I got to remember how it feels, you know, the wind and everything. Um the vibrations of the bike when you keep giving it throttle. Yeah. Just got, got to remember how it feels. How'd you feel about cranking so hard on that rebel to get it to move that that's the big factor that usually turns people off from Honda rebels. Really? Um, I was just worried. Like I, I was just taught like not to give a bike so much throttle if it's like screaming like that. Cause it's bad for the engine or whatever. Right. So I was just trying to be like a courteous friend. And I'm like, I don't want to mess up your bike. If, turn it rev it right no yeah it wasn't until the end where i'm like because i was getting a little frustrated i'm like i mean i can't catch up to bob like i'm trying to catch up and then i finally figured like the sweet spots of when to shift gears and um just give it how much throttle like pull back and everything because you you were right you told me like like compared to harley's you could just give it a little and it just goes but on the rebel i really need to crank it and i did it and I pretty much, I don't know if you noticed towards the end, I was like right behind you right, or like right beside issue. you. Right. Yeah. That was pretty like good. instantly. Yeah. And boy, then they'll teach you patience. A Honda Rebels will teach you patience. I've learned, I learned so much the definition of the term patience while riding that motorcycle. My favorite part though was when I looked over and you went, yep, yeah, this is my bike now. I got, it's <laughs> <laughs> that so fun. Like I, even though I, I ride bigger bikes, like, I don't know. I, I, got this whole stigma thing about you know girls are supposed to ride smaller bikes because it's a girl bike or whatever but no like small bikes can be a ton of fun and because of the size like because of the size of it you can um, throw it around more easier That's right. and um yeah just feel and like it's part of you compared to you're lugging around a whole piece of junk of metal or whatever no you're right and i i think they're terribly convenient for most of the commuting, hopping around town, the bank, the grocery store, whatever, mm-hmm. I get to use that bike for all sorts of craziness. And that bike's raced all over. That bike's gone extremely far. And it's it's done really amazing things. And it you just got to be okay with twisting it and letting it scream. And you think you're going to blow it up. And it'll do that all day long. Hashtag little bike pervert. Okay. You ever hear that hashtag? That's my hashtag. I'm my no, no, but I feel like it's a great commuting bike because I, you know, I, I only commuted ever, like the last three years of my life on a motorcycle. Not only did I do my trips on it, but I went to school, went to appointments, all that crap, um, rode around in the city. And I don't know if now 
because of my accident, I don't know if I felt comfortable or if I currently feel comfortable riding or commuting in the city again. I'm considering, like, if I do get a smaller bike, that'd be, like, my commuter bike. And I know it's not really, like, a safety thing because it's smaller. I'm more prone or whatever. But I don't know. I think it's just a comfort thing for me, for myself. Easier to maneuver, throw around compared to my bigger bikes. I feel like it was such a hassle for me to, in Milwaukee, especially in Milwaukee, how the roads are. It was just a lot, a lot more to deal with, handle. You were just in the thick of it, though. I mean, there was some real stop and go traffic, traffic lights, people trying to make left turns in front of us. You were really rocking it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I I almost was even in the same position as I was uh, for my accident. Like being on the main road and we we drove by the shopping plazas and I literally was thinking this is exactly how I got hit. Uh, But, you know, hearing or at least in the roads here in Riverside where we were riding, there were medians in the middle. The only direction those cars could go were the same direction that we were going. So normally they'd go when you exit out of the shopping plaza, you'll go in the um, closest lane to to you. Uh, But on my accident... um, me and my buddies were riding on the fast lane, three lane road, and the van was pulling out. There was no median. So that's how I could tell they were trying to get to the other side of the road to go the opposite direction. Because before I experienced that moment of uh, just like blacking out, um, I saw the van just coming straight, like saw the wheels weren't turning or anything. So that's why, boom, right, right towards me. And there she was, right next to me, riding again, all on her own accord. It was great to be part of it and great to witness it. Dare I say, a proud dad moment. But she did it all by herself and all on her own. Very super cool. Let's get into a bit more backstory right now of the veteran that is Angel and the scars that she gets to carry from this accident. Enjoy, my fellows. What'd you do in the service force? Oh, uh, I enlisted in the U.S. Navy at uh, 18 years old, right out of high school, and um, I was a quartermaster. Uh, Quartermasters, they deal with, like, the navigation of the ship. We don't drive the ship. We're the ones that, uh, you know, study... Um, charts, plot routes, and, you know, present them to our office, uh, the, the actual navigator, like our boss. Yeah. Wherever we go on deployment or whatever mission training exercise. And I think it's really cool, but for the audience, tell us the cool ship you were on. The, what's it called? An acid? An acid. <laughs> An acid ship. No. Oh, my very first ship. I was stationed in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Um, it's labeled an LSD. <laughs> LSD. I love it. I got a buddy who served on one as well. Actually, he served on the same ship as you did. But Oh, really? The yeah. uh, USS Oak Hill. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. That was fun. And the whole theme was it could submerge itself, pick up other vessels. Yeah, so um, it was an amphibious ship, so we like they have well decks. And, um, yeah, the whole concept. Sorry, it's been like a while since I've been out, so sorry if I sound weird or stupid to all my military people um (laughs) you're fine um yeah uh that that ship has a well deck so whenever we pick up um like amphibious vehicles the ship the back of the ship actually submerges underwater um and that's how they enter us it's pretty pretty cool stuff well i agree because i don't own one so (laughs) i don't know what i'd do with one you don't have lsd no that's good (laughs) Uh, let's talk about your recovery. Okay. You're in this great accident. You're in the middle of college. Oh my God. Yeah. It happened at like the worst timing. Um, you know, I just, I was in a great part of my life. Like, uh, I, so I got out of the service and I went through my, my whole period of like trying to discover myself what to do. Um, I even w- actually just went through a divorce as well. So it was just a lot of change, just being completely on my own. Um, and so, yeah, I did, I did the whole live on my bike right around the country for one and a half, almost two years. And that's when I decided, all right, I'm ready to, you know, I'm very grateful to have these benefits that I earned in the service, like the GI bill, 
So I'm like, all right, I'm ready to attend college um, and get my education, get my degree. Um, So that's why I decided, or I'm going to establish myself in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, because I'm originally from um, San Diego, California area. So, um, yeah, so I moved the summer of 2019 to Milwaukee um, all on my own, uh, like paid for myself and furnished my new apartment and everything. I think the only help that I got was my friends, Biola and then you and Annette <laughs> to right. bring my motorcycles over. Um, cause those were my most prized possessions. So I, I needed to lend that responsibility to the most trusted people. Yes. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> uh, but no, everything else I, you know, from my, Mar- my previous marriage I sold and or got split up from the divorce all that nasty shit and um yeah I was just so proud I I used all my own money to get my to establish myself in Milwaukee um so I lived in Milwaukee for about four months and it, in those four months I it felt like I did so much uh, meeting you new, did. yeah meeting new people new friends I'm like I didn't notice, but I really just like push myself or put myself in the moto community there. Yeah. Like I kind of just looked up the stuff that's there. I mean, obviously Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that's where Harley Davidson headquarters is at. Right. And you're just right across her apartment complex is right across the river. So it's half a mile really over the bridge. Of the museum. The yes. Museum. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. I pretty much live at the Harley Davidson museum. <laughs> that's great. Oh, so funny. But the community's been very accepting. Milwaukee Mike's a nice guy. You've hung out with a few other people. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I was, um, like, affiliated with, like, this uh, community of women riders. They're called, like, the Litas. They're now, like, worldwide. And I just really appreciate that, you know, they welcome women of all riding levels and stuff. So since I was going through... A divorce and getting out of the service trying to find myself these group of women helped me um helped me in that process of dis- discovering who i am individually um so anyway so because i feel affiliated myself in um, the leaders i was thinking hmm i know there's a milwaukee branch so i hit them up over social media and i told them my story i'm like hey i'm moving um is there any way is like is there a girl there that could possibly let me stay at their place while i'm you know, shopping, apartment shopping and trying to establish myself. And they're like, oh, yeah, come on. Like, there's this girl. Her name's Michelle. Um, she is awesome. I am, like, forever in debt to her because she's helped me so much of me moving there and establishing myself there. Um, stayed with her for, like, a week and a half and then was able to establish myself there. Kudos to Michelle. Yay for her. And thank you, Michelle, for housing our beautiful daughter known as Angel. <laughs> um, so once you got there, you started going to school, started classes. Oh, right, right. So um, I started classes um, in September uh, and it was awesome. I was so I was so excited because my only college experience was I was still active duty in the Navy. So I was just going like to a military online school. Um, I've always wanted to go on campus and kind of experience a little bit of, like, college life. Not really into, like, the partying or football games or whatever. Right. Um, But uh, to be in in a classroom setting and everything. And I was attending for two weeks. And then I got hit by a van. And so, unfortunately, because of that, um, I was, you know, I was hospitalized for a week. Had very major surgery to put put my leg back together yeah um, i'm pretty much like a bionic woman from the hip down right. or on the right side at least right. <laughs> and um and so what i have to do with classes is i had to drop because i was going full time so i i had to drop out of like half of them um but then the other half i was able to like convert them to online so while i was healing from my injuries i was going to school at the same time and I'm really proud of myself that I was able to finish the fall semester with A's. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a big one. Mm-hmm. And then you came back to California, but you're going to be going back. You're starting classes again, mostly online, right? Yeah, that's I decided to do another still... semester online um, just for my well-being. 
I really want to go back on campus for sure. Just I'm I'm not confident in walking right now. Um, and, you know, walking to my classes across campus is a bit of a doozy. So, yeah. Yep. How do you feel about your scar? I think it's really <laughs> cool. I'm just going to say, young lady. Yeah. I'm uh, pretty excited about it. Maybe there's a really sweet tattoo in the future. I don't know. That's what but... everyone's been telling me. It's like, man, that's a good outline for a tattoo. <laughs> How do you feel? Uh, I mean, I have mixed feelings about it. Um, I do think it's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> it looks pretty gnarly. I It's, uh, it's kind of like an S trail. And then I have all my other surgical scars. So I, bought, I have about like seven, seven noticeable um, scars. Um, but I mean, I have to admit, like as a woman, especially that I'm single, um, hopefully, you know, one day I can date and or be married again or whatever. And sure. I get a little insecure that um, maybe the scar will like scare away some people <laughs> or you know other guys might not think i'm attractive just because i don't have the beautiful long tan legs that look normal i have like all these scars so well you can imagine the opinion that i would give is the whole motorcycle thing makes up <laughs> for it and i'm a big fan of scars myself but whatever works for you that's just <laughs> no, yeah advice. i definitely like my close um moto friends uh my male ones they all say like that's it's really gnarly and stuff, and they they don't think of it. They don't think it would hinder my chances of finding someone. So, <laughs> oh well. But I mean, you know, I'm a human. I'm a girl, so I have a little bit of insecurities of my looks and stuff. But I'll I'll warm up to it. I don't know why you get your looks from my side of the family. We're gorgeous. So. Of course, yeah. Know. <laughs> So we'll be back in just a minute when Angel dives a little deeper into her injuries and the recovery she's gotten to go through to get back onto her road. Also, a big special thanks to our friends over at MotoFam who assisted her in getting back together, making everything happen. If you don't know what MotoFam is, you can check them out on any social media uh, or they have a website as well. But look them up. MotoFam, M-O-T-O-F-A-M. Mitch, who runs MotoFam, is uh, one heck of a woman, and they give a lot of money to injured motorcycle riders. Just a quick thanks to our sponsors, Dirty Radio FM. Get the app, download it today, it's free. Click your phone twice, get your music playing. Also, gasoline and coffee motorcycles. Thanks for all you do, guys. If any of you listening are interested in sponsoring this show, feel free to hit me up. I take sponsorships, both small and large, to keep this going and keep the lights on. Also, if you're interested in being on the show and have a good story to share, you know we want to hear it. Feel free to send me an email, AmericanRoadRunnerTheBook at gmail.com, or hit me on a social media DM, Messenger, whatever works. We are interested in stories of the road, and that means your stories. And now, back to Road Angel and her road to recovery and totally rocking it. Enjoy, my fellows. TBI. Well, it stands for traumatic brain injury. And, um... It's really hard to notice on the outside, physically. Um, but uh, that was an injury I also sustained from my motorcycle accident. Um, I was wearing a full face helmet. Um, so I'm very thankful that, you know, I had no cracks in my skull or anything. But the week that I was hospitalized in the, in the hospital, um, I was showing symptoms of TBI. I had double vision. When my friends came to visit me, like, I couldn't clearly see their face. Like, um, they looked like they had two eyes, two mouths. It was really, it was really trippy. Um, and then I kind of suffered a bit of a, like, short term memory loss. And when I was given the cognitive tests at the hospital, you know, they, they tell me, uh, give me questions, very simple questions. Like, one I remember is, uh, 
with the exception of pronouns, list words that start with the letter F. I mean, when you hear that, you think, oh, there's thousands of words I know. Let me list them. And I remember all I said was, like, fire, friends. And after I said that, I, like, went blank. And that was, like, the weirdest thing ever. Because you know, you know yourself. You're like, I mean, I graduated high school. I'm an adult. I know Rock. there's more than two words with the letter F. But your brain, your mind just, like, shuts off. Like, or goes blank. Um... And so I was showing symptoms of that a lot, that I'd get really tired. And it even show, uh, made me feel, like, physical symptoms of, like, I just get really tired. Like, I'd always want to take a nap after reading something. Yeah. Um, so that made it difficult that when I transferred my classes online, um, what I knew were very easy homework assignments became very difficult for me. Because reading reading the assignments or having to write papers... It made me exhausted, mentally exhausted. Yeah, and sure. It was just a little scary. I think recovery, too, can really be different for everybody. You had a little bit of help. I mean, not only from the motor community. And I remember, I don't think there, there was a time there for a few months where you and I would talk once a week. And we'd talk for an hour or two. I just couldn't handle the idea of you not talking to me. <laughs> How are you? How's this? How's that? How's this? How's that? You know, thanks, Bob. But we got to share some pretty deep stuff. But the answer is you had a lot of help from other people as well. Do share. Right. So um, since I just moved to Milwaukee, I didn't really have um, a big support group. But I technically did, you know, with the Lita's Milwaukee branch. Those girls are awesome. So even though I've only yeah. known them for four months... They were there on my by my bedside at the hospital and everything. So I had the help of those girls to bring me back home, to clean my apartment, to feed me for, you know, the uh, the good, like, the first three weeks of yeah. recovery. Um, well, you know, when you just go through an accident, you're kind of going through all, like, the insurance claims and everything, um, seeing how you are financially. Because another thing, like, when you're down, if, especially if you're working, um, you don't know if you can work and earn your income. Right. So there's that financial strain. Um, so after, I mean, at the beginning, I had many people in the community tell me, do you need help? Like I can set up a GoFundMe or do some fundraising. So much was going on. I just, I denied all that or I rejected the help. Um, cause I just wanted to do it myself. I'm one of those people that I don't, I don't like asking for help. Sure. Um, but it wasn't until two and a, yeah, two and a half months after my accident, I've already been transferred from Milwaukee to San Diego um, to continue my recovery for therapy. And that's when I discovered um, how much of like a, fin a financial toll it really was to me. Um, I'm single. I'm, I'm supporting myself. So like I'm, you know, I'm very grateful that I have, um, you know, money coming from the Navy for my service. Sure. Um, but I just couldn't imagine if I didn't have that, like, and I wasn't working, I, you know, you know, my bills, everything. I don't know how that'd work out. So, um, I asked a bunch um, more people, what should I do? I actually got a message from Mitch. Mm -hmm. Um, she sent me a link to the Motofam. Um, I guess like to apply or, I don't know what's the right term, but to like submit a form of needing help. And I've known about Motofam way before my accident because Motofam sponsors a lot of like um, events. I yeah. know they're very um, active in Babes Right Out events. Yeah. And they, you know, do raffles and everything where that money goes towards Motofam. So I've been a part of those raffles. Didn't win anything yet, but sure. we all know it goes to a good cause. I didn't think I'd be eligible for this support from uh, a nonprofit organization. Um, but the worst that could happen was them to tell me, sorry, no. Sure. So I just put in my information and yeah, I got like a call from Mitch and, um, she talked to me. She was very sweet, you know, wishing me like well and every, like with my recovery. Um, and yeah, I was able to get financial help. What Motofam does is, you know, they'll donate 
um, I believe like up to a thousand dollars. Um, I don't know. Re- I really don't know how that works, like how much they'll give you. Right. But, um, I was pretty much, a- I don't know if awarded is the right word, but I was awarded like a thousand dollars and that helped so much because w- what I def, what I used it for was for my co-payments for my therapy. Sure. Um, I, you know, I have physical therapy, like mental health and speech therapy and they all require co-payments. Right. So that really adds up. I was pretty much going to therapy four to five times a week. Well, you're right. And Mitch does wonderful things. She's one of my favorite people. I even let her drive my truck once, which I wasn't sure. And I don't know. Everyone's different. But I was like, you okay with the clutch? And she just grabbed the keys, jumped in and pulled out of the driveway and peeled away. You know, she was just <laughs> fine. She's That's sick. she's a wonderfully talented uh, human being and Moto Fam does wonderful things uh, as a five hundred one c three nonprofit that it is, and they're always happy to take donations from anybody. In fact, I've got a check sitting in on my dresser right now for her from Abate Local Twenty Seven that I'm president of. We decided to give Moto Fam a bit of money. So if anyone's listening and looking for somewhere to donate appropriately. I believe MotoFam is a wonderful organization for that, as they've helped you and helped so many other people. Oh, definitely, because you never know that you'll be on the other side. That's right. exactly what happened to me. I was, I donated a lot in raffles, right. and then no idea. A few months later, I was on the other receiving end. Mitch just kicks butt. I'm a big fan of hers. The Awesome Angel. <laughs> and the recovery thereof. You're rocking it, kid. Thanks. So now we get to the new and exciting part of the show where we put our headlights on. Riders of the 1K who have put their miles where their mouths are. Hashtag put your miles where your mouth is. Ride 1K in a day is a self challenge in which you. The rider, challenge yourself to knock out a thousand miles in a day. Last year, 2019, we had 136 riders with 140 rides. Needless to say, the categories of awesomeness included youngest rider, oldest rider, oldest moto, most 1K, i.e. some people did more than one, the fastest time on a chopper, which may not have been won by me, but some guy named Charlie Weissel, whoever that guy is, the fastest time and most total miles. And yes, as you suspected, Ride 1K in a Day is international. Totally international. Let's go to 2020. New website, new features on the website. Check it out, Ride1KinaDay.com. And 2020 started off with a bang. Someone by the name of SD underscore real underscore estate crushed his second ride one can a day on January 31st with plans to do one every month this year. This loop began and ended in San Diego with 1,026 miles in 18 hours, 59 minutes. Great work, Scott. Look forward to seeing you at it again soon. Scott wrote, As 2020 kicked off, I was frustrated because I realized that since my first Ride 1K in a Day in November of 2018, I had let work and life get in the way, and I barely did any riding in this 2019. It was the last week in January, and I decided I was going to try to do Ride 1K in a day at least once a month in 2020. Tricky part was, I only had a couple of days left before the end of the month. I hopped on my bike January 31st and took a casual pace out of Prescott, Arizona to see a friend for lunch and a couple of beers. It was an awesome day and I'm already figuring out where to go for February. One down, 11 to go. Way to go, Mr. Scott. Did I mention the new Ride 1K patches are in for 2020? That's right. Every year, new patch. As you complete the ride, you get said patch of that year. Some people might have gotten a few tattoos. Those are at your cost. But the new patch design are in. You can see them on their social media. 
Ride1K underscore in a day. Next ride is from Rancho Craigamunga. He's already knocked out his second Ride1K this year with plans to do many more. This one clocked in at 18 hours, 8 minutes, and 1,023 total miles. He wasn't solo this time. He brought a passenger. Beach Girl underscore 805. Remember, passengers get a patch too. Y'all rode it, you deserve it. Mr. Rancho completed my third 1K in a day in about eight weeks' time. This time with a passenger. What a ride. My chick is a badass who rode over 1,000 miles in less than 24 hours, and I'm proud of our accomplishments and journeys through our peer run. We saw all kinds of cool shit along the way, endured cool temps in the morning and evening, but had a blast and looking forward to killing the next one. Hashtag Mile Crusher. Let's talk February. Mr. Scott knocked out February Ride 1K, his second one for the year, and plans to crush another every month like we previously mentioned. He did a few extra miles in this one. 1,142 miles to be exact, in 20 hours, 14 minutes. Congrats again, Scott. He wrote, I was on the fence about getting up at 3.15 when the alarm went off, which was a first for a ride day. I guess doing a 1K a couple of weeks ago zapped my enthusiasm a little. After laying there for a few minutes, however, I got to it. The plan was to to not focus on time as much as hauling ass to get somewhere cool, riding, exploring during the midday, then to take a break, then haul ass home. Leaving San Diego, I chose Phoenix and was heading up the Highway 87 into Tonto National Forest by about 10 a.m. This was everything I had hoped for. Wide sweeping turns, perfect temps, and awesome views. I meandered over to Sedona and was blown away. I'd heard great things, but the scenery far surpassed my expectations, and I was definitely going to go back many times. It's always tricky taking such off-the-beaten-path roads on long days, but even after hitting construction five times that took us down to one lane, it was worth it. I finally saw Flagstaff after having to reroute the last two times. It was in my sights, and I'm glad I did. Had a great cheeseburger and a couple of beers at altitudes and headed home. As the sun went down, I got a little groggy and frustrated with how far I still had to go, and I started to question my plan. But once it was dark, my mind got focused and my glorious beast chewed up the desert highway the way she was built to. Whenever I hear myself whine a little, I just think about all the badasses who've done long days on such smaller bikes with no windshields or heated gear. Then I make fun of myself, shut the hell up, and give it gas. I've never spent much time in Arizona, but the last few trips took me there, and it's incredible. I'm looking forward to exploring it more, In the immortal words of Jeff Gladstone, get busy living. Cheers, brother. I'm doing exactly that. Well done, Mr. Scott. We got another one. Kyle Custom Colors crushed his first 1K with us with 1,003 miles in 17 hours, 30 minutes. Let's hear about it from the man himself. I left Lake Havasu City, Arizona, early Saturday morning with a goal of hitting Roseburg, Oregon that evening. There was a small window in the weather and a storm was supposed to hit northern Nevada and the Cascades that night and I knew I didn't want to be in the middle of that. I was ripping through the desert, stopping just long enough for fuel and to take a leak. It was cold as fuck, but I was making good time and was enjoying the desolate desert until the man in blue decided to rain on my parade and pull me over for 90 in a 70. He said he was giving me a break and only wrote me an 80 in a 70. After that, I slowed it down to 10 over the speed limit or so, I think. I really don't have a clue. I don't have a speedo. It got windy south of Reno, and stayed that way until I got up in the mountains around Susanville. 
From there on, it was still cold as fuck, but no rain until I hit the Oregon gloom. From Ashland on, it was raining, hailing, and just fucked up for the lack of a better term. I made it to Rosenberg cold, wet, and ready to see some family. Other than a ticket and briefly zigging when I should have zagged in Nevada, it was a pretty uneventful ride. I hung out with the family, I came up to see, and a few friends for a couple days, and turned around and came back. Well done, sir. In these trying times of the coronavirus, of self-quarantine, and the way the future and the economy is getting exciting, especially when it comes to travel, they haven't shut down any state borders yet, They've asked people to quarantine themselves. Some cities have shut down. Let's just give a quick word that whether you're going near, far, or somewhere in between, usually when we ride, we ride for destination. You don't have to do that with a ride 1K in a day. You throw your leg over your scoot and you can finish where you started. Heck, I could ride around the block that many times, whatever it takes to equal a thousand miles in less than 24 hours. Although, I reckon my block would have to be a freeway. That's an idea. I should try that. I wonder if Charlie Weissel and maybe Terry Madden and a few of those buddies would be interested in racing. I could probably call F-Bomb. He'd jump in on that. Regardless, doesn't matter what you do, how you do it. Ride your ride your way. Hashtag, ride 1K in a day. You don't ride. Put your miles where your mouth is. And Mile Crusher. Check out Ride 1K in a day. And thank you to all who have participated and taken on the self-challenge. This is Bob Marshall, your host, American Roadrunner Motorcycle Show. Until next time. American Roadrunner. American Roadrunner. And don't forget, come back real soon for part three, Road Angel. Check us out online, AmericanRoadRunnerTheBook.com. On Instagram, American Roadrunner. On Twitter, on Facebook, American Roadrunner.